Hi everyone. Welcome to our Feral Tango vlog. Um, today we're going to be as answering questions from, from last week. Our last vlog, which was about practicing. Now these questions are a little bit not completely about practicing all of them, but we'll answer them anyway, and hopefully they won't open a can of worms, or maybe they will. I don't know. Yes, we are right now in the coast. We're in uh, Slatin in Croatia, in the coast, so as you see us some some nice tan, at least for a few days because then we're going to Argentina. Yes. And so, anyway, let's start with our first question. So what's the first question, Sarah? Can uh, you please tell me? The first question was from the YouTube video. Um, thank you so much for leaving the question on YouTube. It's just easier for us to have them all in one place because then we can organize them better. Yeah. Um, so this question was for Ivan, and the question was mm -hmm. any follower, any leader technique videos that he would recommend. Interesting. Um, any video technique. Actually, for the ones that know about Tango Meet, we are part of Tango Meet. It's been already what? TangoMeet.com. It's been a, almost a year, almost not a year. quite. Yes. Not quite a year. And yet. we're uh, soon doing the continuation of our videos. So we'll hopefully we'll complete uh, the the circle. Yes. Then we we'll might expand it. Later. So there we'll have a little bit more of uh, men technique. Uh, anyway, like you guys know, or for the ones that they don't know, pretty much of all of our videos they're based in, in technique, and we don't believe in followers technique and men technique as a separate thing even though you can have let's say different embellishments but for us doing embellishments is not a technique class okay so let me let me finish the or rephrase that <laughs> finish the tango meet thought uh, on tango meet we have a body mechanic section the body mechanic section is all uh, individual technique so if you're looking for technique videos that are progressive and um, have exercises and explanations and deal with your whole body and are free to practice. Um, the first whole first section is basically like, I think 10 videos on body technique and another 10 videos on exercise that accompany that, those videos on body technique. So yes. you can't go wrong with those. And then like Ivan was saying, yes. Besides that. For us technique, there's no difference between follower technique and leader technique because essentially what we're talking about is body mechanics and those are the same. Mm -hmm. And so then I would say yes, the only videos that eventually if I have only for men or something like that, if I will create, it might be possible this time around when we film you, um, Tango Meet again. But if not, if you tell me, I wouldn't know how to tell you where to look for any men only technique. Uh, I wouldn't have to help that way. Go to Tango Meet, as easy as. Yeah. And then Next. actually, I have a question for you guys. Oops. What is technique in tango? Um, because I want to, I think I want to do a whole video about what is technique. Um, I think it's a really important discussion. So I'm totally curious what you guys think technique is. And I would love to hear your answers in the comments. And what else? Is there the next question? Why are you such a rush? Are you hurrying, hurrying somewhere? Yes, come on. Yeah, see, somebody is chill, chill. Somebody is impatient. Okay. Next question is from Mitch. Hi, Mitch. Hey, Mitch. And Mitch has a really uh, long question about preparation um, for performing. Um, so he wants to know about any mental relaxation preparation exercises, rituals we do before a performance to help us focus in, uh, and execute our performance. And if it's natural or if it's we've been doing it for a long time, uh, is it internal or external? And does it change if we do choreography or if we do an improvisation? Okay. Uh, I tell in my side, and then you, Sarah, will tell the her side of the story of how it worked for her. Uh, if it is any mental thing. Um, I don't know, I, I would say, I mean, I've been dancing for a really long time, so, um, you know, uh, 
I wouldn't say that I don't get uh, nervous or I don't get scared to perform and all of that. Uh, I get nervous, but just because I'm a perfectionist and I want to make sure that I do a good job. And, uh, but it's not that I get so nervous that I cannot do anything or I feel that I have to do something extra to calm myself down. It's just like it's a mix of uh, being excited and uh, making sure that everything goes right. And that applies if I'm going to improvise or do a choreography, it's the same thing. For me, performing, I mean, there is no a, a difference. Unless a long time ago, when I used to do mostly choreography and it wasn't with Argentine Tango, it was with other things. I had a training, specific training, that this is for Argentine folklore, for actually Malambo, uh, for the ones that, that know or know, anyways, Argentine folklore. And I used to have to go uh, and try to memorize, uh, no, I'm sorry, no memorize, go uh, in my head thinking about the whole choreography to see how it was, but I have to pretty much do it like a, like a movie. You, I have to be able to see every single thing that I was doing on the music, with the rhythm, and all of them. And I would do it right before competing at the time when, when I used to compete. But again, it wasn't tango, it was Argentine folklore. But other than that, sometimes I have to, if my body feels a little weak, I have to do some, I don't know, dominoes, push-ups, running, you have to get my body a little bit active, mostly after so many, you know, so much traveling and stuff like that. And if not, I have to be in a good mood. I have to try to, I don't know, try to make some jokes or something to kind of like get me going a little bit. But more than that, there is no like a ritual or anything in particular that I need to do or anything like that. I don't know with Sarah, but let's see. Um... Actually, it's really funny, but for me, it depends on if it's summer or winter. <laughs> so it's really crazy, but it's true. If it's summer and my body's warm and loose and open, then I have to do a lot less than if it's winter and I'm cold and my muscles are tight. Also, if I'm sore or if I'm not sore, it's really, it's really, really different. So it takes me a super long time to warm up. It takes me like, I don't know, an hour um, to warm up. So, um, like, my body has to feel like it's like soft but strong and that if I'm standing on the ground I have to feel like I can push through the ground down if I feel like I can, I'm pushing the ground and I'm on top of it it's not gonna be a good day so that's one thing uh, another thing for me is uh, my memory is like super bad I'm a re I have <laughs> really bad really bad memory for choreography um, it's kind of strange because I can do the choreography for like a year and then I don't do it for two months and the first time I do it, I have to literally like go through it to remind myself of what it is. Um, and then after that, it works again. But uh, I get a lot more nervous if I have to do choreography than if we have to improvise. Um, for improvisation, I feel much more like free than with choreography. Um, and I used to get super nervous when we first started performing. Uh, I would get it super, super nervous. So we should do a video, Ivan, about our first performances. Okay, and we'll then we'll a, talk we'll, about yeah, it. We'll <laughs> so anyway, so I used to shake like crazy. I used to shake so much when I was performing that I would like shake Ivan. Uh, that thankfully, thank God, never happens anymore. But um, um, that just came through experience. Like I did it enough that at some point I stopped getting nervous. But it's really, really good, important for me to warm up my body. If my body's warm, nothing works. And the second thing that's important is, like Ivan said, is to be in a good mood or be, uh, be happy uh, or be confident. If I don't feel confident, then I don't take as many maybe risks and then it shows because my body doesn't look stretched. It kind of, the, the energy that comes out is not right. So I guess those are important things. Can I show them something really cool? What? <laughs> Sunset right now. One oh second. my god. Okay, yeah. So and this is like a little a little distraction, but let me see if we can see it. This is where we are. Okay, I don't know if he's filming. I cannot see it. Anyway we'll see them. Trying to disconnect from the camera. Anyways. Well, hopefully, we got it. 
because it's amazing. It's one of the most beautiful sunsets. Okay. Um, good. Next, Next question. Next question is from Johnny. Uh, Johnny, you wrote really funky questions. Uh, classic figures comparing traditional versus untraditional approach to Molinetes should you learn from one teacher are many classic figures I'm not sure what you really what you mean, mean. like uh, what we so I'm gonna skip that because I'm not sure what classic figures mean um, comparing traditional versus untraditional approach to Molinetes I'm not sure what you mean there either like approach to so anyway, teaching we, them, yeah. but I think what you're talking about is the traditional way of executing a turn. Yes, I think that's what I or think. Or if you mean the traditional way in which a turn works versus a non-traditional way. Good. So uh, what we can tell you, or tell you, all of you guys, is that um, uh, for some of our teachers that they were they were trained by uh, some of the old milongueros, old generation of people. We have some uh, information that, for example, the turn it was in a particular way, how to do the turn, on the, or the molinete, I don't like the word molinete, so I would call the turn of hero. Um, it, for some of them, they will say, well, it was, you know, uh, depend how they were leading me to do the turn. It was in a, a particular stroke that you're, that you're supposed to do, one, two, one, two, three, or whatever that is. It was depending on how it was led, or, or for some people how it was choreographed, or whatever. Or depending on the person. So each leader, each man would have a different, his own like personal yes. preference, how he, what he wanted. So yeah, for some people they use, they uh, you know they do the turn either that all the time is are even, then there are, there is uh, an idea that there is a a part that you speed up that there is like uh, from the back step, back side forward, that that's the part, part that you speed up. Then there is some other people that they don't even uh, turn their hips, they're mostly crossing their legs. So it's like if the man is here, the follower is doing the turn like this, so her hips are always sort of in the orbit on the circumference So there is no rotation of the no hips. rotation of the hips. And there is no particular amount of steps around so for, for, for some people they practice it around a chair or around something that sometimes becomes square or something, and unfortunately, I mean, it's a good thing for you to practice it by yourself, but it's, it wouldn't be realistic because then a turn it doesn't have to have let's say uh, uh, the same amount of steps all the way around to make one turn. It could be many of them or it could be only two. So all depends on how it's led, and that's what we got from our teachers, and that's what we also work on. We don't. Uh, I don't know. We don't yeah. think about. Yeah, the uh, question is also kind of what kind of an effect do you want? I think that's a more oh, interesting oh, question oh, oh, what in do terms you need of it turning. For? Like, what, what do you need? What it do you for? want it to look like, and what do you need it for? So there are some things that the man does where it's really important that the followers' hips go completely around the circumference like this. They don't they don't rotate mm -hmm. because the leader needs the stabilization effect of that. Uh, and then there are other turns that you really want to open your hips all the way um, because of what the what the leader is doing. Yeah. So, for example, in sacadas, if you don't open your hip, it, it's a really different sensation than if the followers open their hip. So, I want to add to what Ivan said about practicing the turn for followers around a chair. Um, I don't think it's a good idea. I wouldn't do it unless you are. Uh, stepping in the middle between two two of the posts and then rounding around the the edge of the chair. So meaning, if this is, can you see this is a square? Yes, you want to try to step in between, between here, in between here. So you you step here and then you go around and you step. Next step is here, then you go around and the next step is here, because if you do it like this, you're doing a shape that's not actually realistic, realistic. for the turns and then. You're gonna have a problem that in some places you're gonna to be too close to your leader, and other places you're gonna to be too far away from the leader, and um, so then you try to adjust with your embrace, and that won't work. Uh, by the way, anything that happens up here is a result of what you're doing wrong with your legs. So if your embrace um, is suffering, it has nothing to do with the embrace. It's um, your legs. What is the bell? And the faithful are called. 
we're still here, so. Okay, so. So yes, in oh. terms of the the turn, you will have to be even more specific. Or I don't know if we answered your question. Uh, we just talked about a little bit about all the things that we think about the turn. Yeah, uh, there are many, I mean, we can talk about turns for. for yeah, there, is, there are there there are many ways to have to do the turn. All depends on what do you need. Yeah. And for us, we like to learn we're all pragmatic. the ways. Uh, just depend on, on what you need. What's the effect or what's the the ut utility yeah. of it? So yeah. should you learn from one teacher or many? Uh, I think it's really important to get a basis with one teacher, meaning that you understand a universe. Uh, it's really, really difficult when people learn from the beginning with many, many different teachers because they have a frank and dance. They do this like one person, that like somebody else, and then it's all like patched together and none of it really works. So um, my suggestion is learn with one teacher, really learn their universe, maybe switch to a different teacher, learn their universe so you have two universes to compare, and then go out there and get as much information from as many teachers as you possibly can. Um, taking classes is not enough. You have to really practice and you have to absorb and digest information. So and we tell you guys by experience because for us, we felt that we learned the fastest for two reasons. One, because after every private, we, we go and we practice and we'll think about what is that that we learn. But more than anything, it was like we had a stable teacher and for at least for one year, a year and a half, if not two. Two years. Two years. Us. And it was just with that teacher and we used to do everything how the teacher uh, did it. And then after those two years, two years and a half, then we changed and we only did it how the other teacher taught us. And then we have two ideas and we're like, okay, we like both of the ideas, but there are some things that for us, uh, we, we would like to do slightly different. So then we start to combine them and we start to see other ideas from different teachers. But it's because we had it at base, so it's, so it's easier. Yeah, so really we have a lot of respect for local teachers. We did that for a very long time. Yeah. It's a really hard job to grow a community and to grow up dancers. Um, so my hat's off to all the people, all the local teachers that do all the hard work of you know, maintaining the communities and growing the communities and working with their students. Um, our job now is a little bit different. Our job is, uh, you know, we, unless you follow us everywhere um, or you come and study intensely with us f for many months or for some months, like at a time, it would be really difficult for us to serve that function. But we have a different function, which is also really important, and that is to um, inspire and give ideas and challenge uh, the preconceptions that you might have or inspire. And um, so, um, yeah, definitely stable teacher is really important and then once things are clear, go out there and just get information and get yeah. information. And then, I mean, after Question you did that, everything. did do everything. We took classes with many different people and we challenged many different people in a good way uh, just to be able to, to understand what's, what was their world or what they were, what they were saying, right? So we always appreciate questions and we really enjoy having an interaction and an exchange with our students because um, so many things we learn from our students and we really yeah. want our students to ask us questions. It's a huge and very important part of, of the relationship. Okay. Uh, Levant, hello. All right. How do you practice when you do not have a practice partner? Lately, technology is. Uh, <laughs> what? I don't know what you're gonna say. <laughs> uh, I'm just gonna say that they're eventually they're gonna sell some robots. I, I think I saw something on Facebook about a robot. Right? Oh, yeah, that's true. So, you know, save some money. <laughs> and. No. No, okay. It is a tough thing and it's a hard thing. That's why, obviously, yes, it's easier to find somebody to practice with. Uh, so then you get to do your stuff, but there is so much, so much that you can do by yourself. And this, uh, I mean, I'm talking about leaders, but also followers, followers that you don't really need a, a, a practice partner. Uh, you just need uh, to know what you have to practice, and that's that's the the biggest problem. Sometimes we think that we need the actual body to be able to practice the movements and all that. And there is so much things that you need to know on your own body that you need to do that have nothing to do with her that, or with him 
that sometimes we we don't we don't realize. So I mean, really simple things like being able to keep your balance on one foot, and that sounds sounds crazy, but many times we teach in places, and uh, a lot of people have a problem with their balance. Um, for example, problems with coordination, like yeah. which leg do you push off of? Like when you're moving, what leg moves first? Or the, or the coordination of your legs with your upper body. With your upper body, that's one of the most common things. Sometimes people they move their legs, then they move the upper body, or the other way around, and they don't do it in a coordinated way. And I mean, we can talk about a lot of things that that you need, you know. Uh, uh, I mean, that you uh, can do by yourself. But uh, yes, I mean, like uh, there is, I don't know, so many things that you can do on your own. Obviously, it's limited at some point because you need feedback from somebody else to see if he, what you're doing is okay. Especially for leaders because you have to create energy. Um, so you have to have feedback on how is, how is your direction giving? Like, are you clear in yeah. what you're asking from your partner? But and the same thing from followers is like, okay, are you paying attention and really understanding or following or feeling what your partner wants from you? Um, but all those things that have to do with your own movement, meaning being in your balance, uh, pushing off, uh, landing. Um, Can I resume them? Yeah. Um, if you go to Tango Meet, and this is, we have some of the classes, you can look at them or not and see if he, you find them there. But we have a, a section that is uh, body mechanics and then we have a section that is geometry. What is body mechanics? It has to do with what you do with your body and then with geometry. Or partner work. With the, we have to do with partner work. That already, you can already practice by yourself. You don't need on any of that, regardless if there are some movements when you get to practice. Uh, just doing all of that. I mean, how many videos we have just in body mechanics? A lot, but well, we talked about that already. Yes, right? So if you go with that, the, that already can help you. You know, if he, if he I mean, that's a easier way uh, to help you in a way to tell you. But yes, I mean, you don't necessarily need for at least those two, two things uh, a partner. Ideally, it would be great. Obviously, it's easier. But uh, if he, you don't have the the... Okay, next question. What do you practice exactly? What do you practice exactly? So it depends on what your weaknesses are. Um, it depends. You know, if you can't stand on one leg, you have to practice standing on one leg. If you have a hard time uh, turning, you have to figure out uh, how to be able to stand on one leg and stay in your balance as you complete a turn. I mean, it sounds obvious. Yeah. <laughs> but in general, it's like, uh, the, I mean, the question is, Mostly for how I see it's like some people they don't really know what they have to work on. They yeah, that's the that's actually the bigger problem. That's that's the bigger problem, and sometimes uh, I don't know what what you can do is literally go take a private with your with your teacher or one of your teachers or whatever you you, you know you think that that can help you, and then see what they tell you, and then from from there from what they tell you that is your problem, uh, you can work on it. You and can. It's really easy to kind of. Um, fool yourself and think like, oh, but this is, I, of course I can do all this stuff in my body and everything is fine. And then, you know, most of the time that we teach people, they don't have tangle problems. And that sounds weird. They don't have tangle problems. They have body problems. Like, most of the stuff that's an issue to do is not because they can't do it in tango. It's because when they're trying to do it by themselves, they just can't do it. Yeah. So. And sometimes, again, when, when I say by myself because um, when we say that uh, there are some people that you'll see them and then they go like look I'm doing it all by myself but they they don't put in uh, in, uh, in how do you say like as a count thinking where the partner is so when you are practice by yourself you, you also have to think about it that if your upper body is supposed to face your partner you have to try to do the exercise thinking that you, you have some other person that you there. have somebody in the embrace with you because that happens all the time People they go into turns and then they do this. They swing their upper body like crazy and then they turn. It's like you see, I can turn. I it's have brilliant. no problem. I'm perfect. Good. And now try with your partner. And of course, what's gonna happen? It's gonna grab the partner, drag him around, and try to turn. And it's not gonna work. So then, when you practice by yourself, that's one of the things that can help you think about where is your partner and what is necessary. So then, uh, one of the exercises 
turn your upper body, stop your upper body, don't turn anything from your upper body, and try to turn your lower body. Try to see if you can do that. But really moving. stop, like count to two, don't move that don't at move all, and see if you can rotate And see if you can rotate under. Just to give uh, an example, right? But you had, a, you had a, his additional point was like, you know, if I want to improve the speed of the walk, slow down so you can feel your muscles. Yes, absolutely. And another thing is, if you can do something in slow motion, then you will be able to do it fast. Yes. So for, for us, the slow motion is like the test of, yes. is it going to And it, slow motion, it literally, I mean, you can start, let's say if we, we pick uh, the beat in tango, you can try to first only step on the one, which is something that we do with many of our students. Try to walk only on the one. One, two, three, four, one. But try to maintain it evenly. And whatever you do, whatever movement you do, try to maintain it that everything is even, 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 even. So there are no accelerations there's no in accelerations. the landing or in the takeoff. Or and in the there middle. is no moment of you waiting. Stopping. You wait, one, two, three, four, and then you step, you're already no. stopping. Everything you have to be even. So that's already something that can help you. And if you're good stepping only on the one, do it every two ones. Every three ones. Really challenge yourself. Yeah. And um, that can help you to uh, find control in, in your movements and eventually when you're gonna do after um, then a question what needs to be practiced right after a private or a seminar the same concepts or, or different ones so what we did is we would take a class um, with somebody a private or something and we would get a correction like step here don't step there in this movement and then it would work and then we'd be like okay though this is great so this movement belongs in this class of movements more or less right and then we would try that correction in every single movement inside of the same class. And it sounds crazy, so, but we were crazy. So for example, uh, I learned a back saga in the side step, you know, or the open step of the follower. And I learned it on my left leg, right? So okay, we did it and the correction it was, just be careful um, not to, let's say, not to put your heel down on the back step. Okay. Good. So then we did that, and then like, okay, we finished the class, and now let's try to see which other steps, right? I can, I mean, she can do, and I could do the same back sack. And then like, okay, besides the side step, which other step you have? Forward step. Let me do the same thing, and to see if the correction that they give me also applies. And like that, we also did it to the other side, meaning that if I was doing it with my left leg, then I'm going to change to do it with my right, to see if it, the correction also applies to that. Once that, that also happens, we're like, okay, now I'm doing the sagada while she's doing either a forward step, a side step, or a back step. So let's change this around. Now, Sarah, I'm going to lead you to do a back sagada to me in the open side step for me, and then forward and back, and see if the same correction that they told me applies for you. Yeah, so it's what's nice about doing it that way is, first of all, you figure out what corrections are real, um, F have a real effect like what which ones are um, uh, just uh, correlations and then which ones are the the, the causation of, of the problem like which you know which correction resolves your problem and which correction is just related to the problem but something else resolves it yeah. so that was really helpful and then the other thing that it did is it kind of forced us to practice a lot of different types of movements just from one single correction and yeah. literally you know from one private class we sp we would spend at least four or five hours working so if we had one private class a week because that's all we could afford we were really poor um, and thank you to our teacher who gave us discounts and loved us at that time um, we would really multiply that, like we would multiply that hour into, because into more. Because think about it, like uh, at that time for us it was like, okay, we don't have enough money, so in that one hour we have to ask all the questions that, that we need, or at least the most important ones, and then after that we really, we really have to work on this because we don't, you know, I cannot come back and ask the same question again. I mean, I can uh, ask the same question, but I, I, I I have to be able to have a question. And if the question is like, okay, so how do you do the back sacada now to the forward step? That, that wouldn't make sense. If he, then the side step is like this, then maybe in the forward step it might be similar, or in the back step it might be similar or the same. So then that was our job to do. And then if we couldn't figure that out ourselves, then we come back and say, look, 
I was trying this, what and I learned from you, works and here. only works here. Why only works here and, and it and doesn't work with else. other things? Yeah. So that way, you know, you really uh, stretching your money, and uh, you really understanding things. Yeah, which is more different. important. Uh, and then the last question, the last question is when you cannot dedicate consistent hours and you only have three hours a week to practice, how do you identify and plan what to practice in order to increase effectiveness? Uh, we talked about a little bit about this in the other video about how to practice and it has to do with quality of time versus quantity. Yeah, but um, if you, you know, most people like why do people get a personal trainer in the gym a lot of people get a personal trainer in the gym is because they need someone else to hold them accountable um, mm -hmm. in the sense that like they they need to have an appointment for to to go to the gym and someone to watch them while they do the exercises I think most adults are smart enough to do an exercise prob program on their own but sometimes what we need is like uh, somebody there that will say, hey, you didn't show up to our appointment or make sure you know our appointment is at this time. Yeah. So one way to, to do this, to only have, let's say, three hours, is maybe try to find a teacher and have one hour private every week and um, have that teacher help you plan out over the short, the medium, and the long term the plan that you're going to go. If you're self-motivating, um, and you know some people are, themselves. some people aren't, then maybe, you know, um, go to see a teacher um, and do, do a plan with them but then you don't need to do the weekly private classes you know go to private take a private once every two weeks or once a month just to make sure that you're on the right track that you're not practicing stuff incorrectly uh, have somebody check you uh, I think that's probably the best use of three hours so you have one hour practice and then the other two hours you dedicate to whatever it is that you came up with uh, with your with your teacher um, anything else? I don't know. I hope you answer everybody's question. I mean, on all the questions, guys, we can go and do a full video of each question. Uh, but uh, we have a lot to talk about. So yeah. we're trying to resume a little bit. If you have a little more, uh, you know, uh, you want a little more details, then let us know. Let um, us know anyway. But uh, yeah. So next week, I think we'll probably talk about performing. We can talk about performing, there are so many things, and when are we going to start with the gossip? That's the most important oh part God, of all of this. <laughs> in Argentina, we'll be more inspired. Okay, uh, next, uh, no, in the in two weeks, we're going to be filming in Argentina. So, we'll tell you one of the latest gossips. We'll take you around, there. we'll take you around the Buenos Aires Mundial. Uh, scene. Ooh, we can talk about all the preparations and all the things that are happening. It's gonna be awesome. Great. Yeah. Stay tuned. And and uh, just write down under if you, uh, you yeah, have Yeah, please, more please write on the YouTube video if you have questions. If you for some reason don't want to log into YouTube because you're lazy, then just write in Facebook. But YouTube's better. Yeah, it will help us that you subscribe. So then we we know who's connected. Yeah. Yes, so Thank anyway, you guys. We stay in touch and we'll talk to you soon. Let's see if yeah, now we get a better view, as we say. Bye-bye.